In 1868, we're going to have another presidential election. The sitting president was Andrew Johnson, but of course nobody wanted him as president, as we talked about before. Um, and so what we're going to end up with is one of our soldier presidents. And in fact, we're going to have a very long run where almost every single man to be president is a veteran of the Civil War. Uh, that's going to go on until, I believe, uh, 1901. Both parties want U Ulysses S. Grant to be the nominee, but to be their nominee in 1868. Uh, but Grant, believing the Republicans are more likely to win the election, and they were really more likely to win the election, decides to run as a Republican. The Democrats nominate uh, New York Governor Horatio Seymour. It's a bitter campaign, uh, whereas you can imagine uh, the, 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 the Democrats support primarily in the South um, with uh, uh, the Republican support among black voters uh, in the South and in the North as well. It was surprisingly close. And in fact, Grant would have clearly lost if he did not have the new black voters in the South. Uh, plus the disenfranchisement of whites who had participated in the Civil War. You may wonder how Grant won these southern states if you look on the map there. That's because whites who had been, participated in the Civil War were not allowed to vote and blacks were allowed to vote. Grant had no political experience and he will turn out to be an ineffectual president who handles almost every issue that comes his way clumsily. His cabinet was a disaster, uh, except for his Secretary of State, Hamilton Fish, who turns out to be pretty good. Uh, his cabinet is really just a bunch of Republican Party hacks who see Grant as, an, as a way to seize power under a president who doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, they will exploit Andrew Jackson's spoil system in a way nobody ever has and just fill up every government job uh, with Republican Party members. Uh, the Republican machine controls the Grant administration completely. He, he really doesn't even know what's going on. The North uh, will begin to tire of Reconstruction and will turn on U.S. Grant himself. In the election of 1872, liberal Republicans revolt against what they call Grantism and they run a third party candidate, Horace Greeley. Uh, he is also a Republican, uh, but, he, but he's running, he being run by the more liberal wing of the Republican Party. Uh, the Democrats, figuring their best chance to win will be to get behind Greeley, will also nominate Greeley, so they'll team up with the liberal Republicans. Greeley is the publisher of the New York Tribute, most famous for his admonishment to go west, young man. Grant still wins easily, largely on the, the southern black vote and the disenfranchisement of southern whites uh, again. Grant's second term will not go well. His first term didn't go that great, but his second term goes much worse. Uh, right around the time of the election, um, it will be revealed that Grant's administration, not so much Grant himself, but Grant's administration had been involved in a number of scandals where they were defrauding the government. And here you see this great classic cartoon. They would call criminal conspiracies at the time rings. And so that's what you see all the rings here, the navy ring, the whiskey ring, and all these rings represent uh, scandals. The biggest scandal was called Credit Mobilier. This was a French company that the American government hired to build uh, part of the Union Pacific Railroad. But in reality, uh, they were handing out fraudulent contracts to the French company. The French company was turning around and giving bribes back to Congress in the form of stock in the company. The company, of course, was showing a great profit because they were involved in this criminal scheme. One of those taking bribes was Grant's vice president, Schuyler Koufax. And so this is going to begin to discredit the Grant administration. And then the floodgates open. The whiskey ring involves the Secretary of the Treasury, Benjamin Briscoe, uh, learning that his staff is helping distillers avoid taxes on their whiskey uh, in exchange for bribes. Whiskey uh, taxes were actually the number one source of revenue for the federal government during the time. The Indian ring involves the Secretary of War, Henry Belknap, who was bribed to keep Indian uh, administration officials uh, in office. Uh, the people would get contracts to run the reservations the Native Americans were on, and then they would not feed the Native Americans, just pocketing the money they got for that themselves, for example. And uh, they were bribing federal officials not to tell anybody that was going on. And there's actually a whole series of other lesser scandals I'm not going to get into here. Economic problems are going to rear their head as well. The Panic of 1873 is the worst one so far in American history. It's caused by an overextension of investment in the railroads uh, by bank tycoons like Jay Cook and company. Um, in fact, Jay Cook's investment company completely collapses because he's extended himself too far in his investments, and that will lead to a, uh, a cascading series of collapses of other businesses. There is pressure to pay off the war bonds, the money we borrowed to fight the Civil War early with greenbacks. Remember, greenbacks are money that is not backed by gold, paper money with no other value. Grant doesn't like this. He's a sound money guy, and he says no, he's not going to go along with this. Um, he favors the lenders over the borrowers, meaning he favors the, the banks who loan the money over the uh, people they owe money to. 
Uh, the Treasury ignores him, remember he was a weak president, and issues more paper money anyway. This causes inflation, and in 1875, Congress passes the Specie Resumption Act that says on January 1st of 1879, all the greenbacks will be taken out of circulation and must be replaced with sound money. All money will then be t uh, pegged back to gold, so money will go back to being rep uh, a representative for gold. The bankers are, th are thrilled, but the people who owe money uh, are in a lot of trouble. In 1875, they formed the National Greenback Party. Uh, they don't give a whole lot of support to any politician, but this money question is going to dominate into the 20th century, and the 1870s will be a time of, of uh, 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 businesses failing coupled with massive inflation uh, and be difficult economic times. The best part of the Grant administration are his secretaries of state, William Seward and Hamilton Fish. Seward buys Alaska from the Russians for $7.2 million. He's mocked at the time. It's called Seward's Folly. Uh, nobody can figure out why we needed this. But it turns out to be filled with, at first, gold and then later oil. Uh, so it turns out to be one of the best purchases in American history. He also annexes Midway, an island in the Pacific that people also don't understand the value of, but will later be important to both our trading empire in the Pacific and, of course, in World War II, which we'll get to uh, way in the next semester. Hamilton Fish uh, will resolve disputes with England over Confederate warships uh, with Great Britain uh, by using an international arbitrator and uh, avoid uh, potentially a war with England. Um, and, and this is something he should be given credit for. <laughs>